rock and roll, alcohol, marijuana. We made a niche for ourselves. I knew it not in 99 was about to come out. But he kept talking about them. Well, I knew it was part of it. Again, Guitar Heroes. I was a Razorback fan and will always be till the day I die. I know all their songs. The cool thing with Razorback is that we're not just that we're going to be the band of Pinoy hard rock, if you will. Juan de la Cruz, Sampi, Pagita. We played that. It actually shows with the first recording, the Heavy Gut Sounds Volume 1. Napaka juvenile ng mga tema namin yun. Rock and roll, alcohol, marijuana. We made a niche for ourselves. You know, like any band, any young band, you're a bunch of friends, you get together. And then uh, one thing leads to the other, and then this is what happens. In the early 90s, we were outcasts. We were the Konya bands, you know. Ano magagawa nila? Ganyan sila tinangan, you know? I mean, Pogi Band, that's really, it's a matter of taste. Diba? Decision yan eh. You know? Eh, sila tisoy. So, you know, that's a... For me, that was always a very funny argument. I think it was just an easier way to isolate us. Because like I said, there was a big scene in Club Dread. But we had our scene in Cali Bar. Medyo, somehow, nakabukod kami. Medyo na single out sila because number one, well, well, our drummer was sort of in the limelight because he was the boyfriend of a very popular actress back then. Goal namin makabot ng Angeles. Kasi back then, lahat ng mga banda na sa Angeles, so we're like, dude. And then Pinatubo happened, so that killed everything. So Angeles was destroyed. So we're like, ah, well. And then then nakachamba kami. We found Calle, which is a small club. In, uh, in Makati, and that's, so that's where we ended up. The scene that we were really a part of was Kali Bar, and the other bands playing there were Coco Jam, like Rico Vélez on bass, Jun Lupito on guitar, you know. Uh, senor, sila yung sinundan namin. We had those guys to look up to. After every gig, sama kami sa kanila, wherever they'd hang out. It's not like we created the band and we ended up being part of something big. No, I don't, I don't think it was like that. I think they just got us because we had a lot of friends, to be honest. We weren't very good. All our friends would come to watch us, and that's why they, they kept us, I think. But we got better over time. I was a fan. I remember telling myself that one day I would like to have a band exactly like these guys. Little did I know that, you know, four years later, I. I'll be playing for them. First gig, I remember, sa ano yun eh, sa Dagupan, it was in a gymnasium. Pagkakit ko na stage, I remember um, our then sound engineer, his name is Aris Ginto. He came up to me, he's like, Bray, wala tayong, wala tayong ano, drum monitor. Okay lang ba sa'yo? Wala talagang magagawa eh. I was like, sure, okay lang. When he left, what the f*** is a drum monitor? Hindi <laughs> ko alam, di ba? I played really fast because I was nervous. But when it was done, I felt really good. The truth is that we don't know the trend of the trend. We just wanted to be here every Saturday. We didn't really even have plans of, of doing an album or anything like that. We just kept doing our gig every Saturday, every Saturday. After, um, the next thing we knew, I mean, there was LA playing songs already on the radio. Uh, the labels were starting to look towards the local talent, signing bands left and right. We just said, okay, signed in kami, and we were snatched up right away. It was like a snowball, you know? And then sure enough, at a certain point, kaput, wala. The dawn was out, but the dawn was out sort of in the late 80s. I think in the early 90s, they were, they were probably the biggest band around at the time when we first came out. Damn, After Image, the E-Heads came just slightly before we did. They had their album out, we got our album out maybe a couple of years later. It took a while for us to get signed. People didn't want to touch us, you know, because we were the Konya metal band that nobody wanted to play with. Yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, it was bad for us, but we worked very hard and to prove everybody wrong that we could really play, and we were very serious about what we did. I'll never forget our first gig in Club Dread. 
It's a long time ago. And we went into, walked into Club Dread. And I remember Patrick riding back said to me, guys, can you just wait in the office? <laughs> because the place was full and everybody wanted to kick our ass. That's, <laughs> everybody just wanted to fucking kill us. You could feel it. People just hated us when we walked in. So we walked in the office, we stayed in the office. And that's, and that's why I love Dodon Cruz. You know, Dodon Cruz of the youth. That guy's the best. Because he actually came over to the office. He hung out with Dave and I. He was, really, he was super nice to us. That's why I, I'll always love Dodon. In, in a time when everybody hated our guts, him and Robert and Arab were all super nice to us. They're such nice guys. We walk up the stage, people, you could feel people were saying, booing and stuff. Oh, wow, we're on the stage. Our first song was um, uh, Jep Rocks by Mike Hanopol. And we rocked it out and it blew everybody away. And ever since then, I think everybody realized that, you know, we know what we're doing. been uh, a fan of Razorback. They were playing in this place called Calle in Makati. They had a different singer, Jose Mari Cuervo. I met the guys already. Oh, good band, awesome. But um, at some point, they lost Mari. They were trying to recruit my brother, si Carl. He was then with Advent Call. Ayaw niyang tablahin yung Advent Call. Carl uh, asked me, Kev, why don't you audition in my stead? So I'm like, hey, uh, cool. Siyempre, kinikilig na ako rin. I'm so wet, man. I'm really so wet. It's wet all over, man. But Carl goes to me, here's the thing. You do it, but you don't wear my clothes. Kasi hiraman pa ng bata ako. I was like, 16, 17. Hiraman naman ng polo mo. Cool yan. Kahit malaki sa akin. You don't walk, you don't talk like me. You be your own guy. From then on, that changed our relationship. Kami ni Carl. Miguel Ortiga, Steer, sorry, Paul. They, they took me in. Louis was new with the band. He was my kuya. For a 17-year-old, you're going into club gigs. You're making your own money. You're like, fuck yeah, who needs school, man? The ex-manager was distributing the budget, the money. Ko sila parang, mm, to lang. Mm, mm. When the manager handed me the money, I counted, it's like 700 pesos. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> I kid, you know, it's like, fuck, I'm rich, but That weekend, I was free, you know, I was Wow. It was an experience. I'll never forget it. But yeah, that's how it started. And that was back in the 90s. Kaputo ka nun, di ba? Ng Pinoy rock. I was 17 then. Um, 27, 37. 22 years into that. Going strong. I love my brothers. It's a good band. It's more than a band. It's a, it's a band of brothers. We're just rehashing. Uh, inuulit lang namin yung ano, yung ginawa ni Peaps, ginawa ni Wally, ni Mike, the guys from Anak Bayan, uh, Gary Perez, uh, Sampaguita. Those guys, we're just doing it again. But we know other things and uh, we infuse that. And it turns into a different booger. Ibang kulangot nene. Eh. Analogy nga namin, uh, like for writing songs, oh, may kulangot ako. Bibigay ko kay Tirso, alagay niya yung kulangot niya. Ikot, 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 ikot. End product is a kulangot of a song. <laughs> Still, it's a great song. I don't want to taste it, but <laughs> it's gone uh, na, na influence kami. Our advantage back then was that there was nobody here who was doing the music that we did. That was like the, the start of the revival of Juan de la Cruz genre of, of music, classic rock. It was very rage. It's very honest and true to its roots. They have the flavor that, that they have and, and that they don't want to compromise and they don't want to change and never have. They're always fun to watch, always were. 
they do what they want to do. They play what they want to play. But then again, it never fails na nakikita ko sila na nakikinig sa bago music din. These guys, nandun yung distinct Razorback sound, but still nag -e evolve Hindi sila nasa stuck sa isang panahon. The attitude that we have to our music is still the same. Back then, we were offered a very big, for the time, recording deal with one condition that we put out a rock power ballad. You have nothing against rock power ballads. But being told to do something with our music, we really said, f*** you, no, no way. We're not gonna go for that. We've maintained that attitude until today. For me, Razorback is always like a, a square and to fit into a hole. In combination, I mean, it's, it definitely was not grunge. I still wouldn't call it metal. We have sort of our own thing going because there's no other way we do it. So, yun na yun. Sometimes we see the, the newer bands and I get surprised by the technical abilities nila na yun. They're more advanced now. It's all from YouTube, you know, you see there's so many tutorials and there's so many like young guitar players, players who are really good. Everything is there for them to learn. Mga talaga yung ano yung level ng technical virtuosity yun. You know, technology is a good a good thing. I think it's been great for the music uh, for the music business in terms of capturing moments. You should know how to do that because it allows you to do things quicker, faster, easier, and at any time. If you have to be more dedicated today, it's because of um, it's a dangerous time in the music industry where you just the money is harder to come by because let's go back to let's say 1999, 2000. CD, that you only had CDs. You had to buy a CD for what, 400 bucks? Yeah. That CD, para, that CD cost 20 pesos to make. To print the CD, it's 20 bucks. So, <laughs> but you know, hey, there's a lot of cost behind it. You have the artist, you gotta pay, you gotta do all of that. And so today, you don't spend for the CD anymore, but you still have to spend all of that stuff to make recording. Of course, recording's gotten cheaper, so you still have to spend quite a bit to make that. It's easy to say it was harder, but then the thing is, like before, we'd have to, to get a record deal. We had to somehow make a name in a scene that didn't really have many vehicles to propagate a band's work. Like uh, now there's obviously the internet, if you want to get the word out. Then we had one radio station and a few magazines, and that was it. And the rest is you have to find your way to get a gig and hopefully people come and then they tell other people and then more people come. It was very basic. It was expensive to, to record, you know. Now, it's so easy to record at home, let's say, up to a certain level of quality. But the comp competition mo naman, mas dumami rin. So, you know, it's, it's harder. It was harder in one way, but it was easier in another way because there weren't that many bands back then. That day, you could make a lot of money just selling records. Now you need to do it. For relevant news, five towns and three cities in Albay have already been placed under a state of calamity. From sunup to sundown. A number of senators are not supportive of the emergency powers. Several oil companies will slash pump prices effective midnight. Wind up your day with the most pressing issues on Nightly News. Weekdays, 9 p.m. Get your daily dose of comprehensive sports news coverage on Sports Desk. Weekdays, 10 p.m. on 9 TV. A lot of artists are not getting paid what they need to get paid. That's why there are no more record companies in the Philippines. How many record companies are in the Philippines? Two? Three? They're all, they're all gone because, it doesn't, because of piracy and all of these things. The money is less because there's internet downloads. iTunes, you know, malaking katas, kat, kaltas ni iTunes. And now you have streaming. I don't know if you guys have read about this, where the streaming services, as much as I love Spotify, they don't pay a lot. The money in the music industry has lessened considerably from before. Because para, it costs you how much to make that CD 
and you would sell it and you'd make a ton of money. So if you wanted to be in the music industry today, then you need to be dedicated because <laughs> it's not the same. It's not like 1974 where you made huge amounts of money. It's not like the early 90s or the 80s where you made a lot, ridiculous amounts of money. But that's how you make money of touring. You get make money from the shows. For bands like us, it's always been that way. You get a little bit of money from the records, but you, you make money on the shows. That day you could make a lot of money just selling records. Now you need to tour, which I think is great because then I like, you know, I like bands that can play well live, so. I have to say, they experience the same luck as we experience the same luck. Their success was our demise. Seven, 98, 99, lumabas yung mga kopao bands. Reg, uh, he called me for advice one day. He's like, what should I do? What should we do to survive? I'm like, f*** Reg, it's resilience. Kasi, nung pumasok sila, there's the whole techno worm that came in. Prodigy, uh, the clubs hitting the scene. Nakpil. Big gigs. They were slowly turning into raves and everything, which diminished the need for rock bands. We were replaced by younger guys who were screaming their heads off. I understand the rage in your words but I don't understand your words. That trend basically killed us. And what Razorback had to do was take a step back, reassess. We didn't die. We didn't fade away, fade out. No, we just took a step back to observe what's really going on. You take a step back. You're too close, you don't see. You step back. Yung span ng isang listener, the younger generation, it's short. They like this music, this, they like the sound, and all of a sudden it disappears. Because may na discoveries ng bago. It's both good and bad. It would be nicer kung yung span nila na pakikinig sa isang artist is masumahaba. Which is why in intervals, star, 1998, five years later, 2003, and then we come up with a double album, a double CD. Inipon namin, igigit na mo yun, you're gonna put out something na kasabayan ng ganito, Hindi ka mapapansin. Tonight's the 24th anniversary ng Razorback. Um, it's actually a Halloween costume anniversary party. Our anniversary is on Halloween. Kanina may lumapit sa amin na, Sir, mula uh, pagkabata ako, siyusunda ko na kayo. Uh, ngayon mayroon na ako six-year-old kid. Sturin niya yung heavy gut sounds, sturin niya yun, yung mga sounds niya. Like, I feel nice about it, pero at the same time, parang may pressure na hey, you're, you're getting older. And... It's very flattering anytime anybody says that, it really is. Yeah. We do what we do because we love doing what we're doing, and if people understand that and get into it, then that means we've done something right. It's much different. Your area priorities change. Like uh, when everyone started getting married and having children and having just really different activities other than being in the band. Yeah, I do enjoy watching Razorback. Um, I've always watched them ever since I was a like, kid. My, my parents would always take me to their shows, so... So yeah, I've always enjoyed their music. Yeah, Subway RCBC Plaza, that's a branch we had for more than 10 years. I, I dare say, so about 12, 14 years na lampas. So, ayun, something that required immediate attention and still requires attention. Pag kailangan ako doon ng umaga, mahirap dahil gali akong tugtog. So, you have to balance that out. The realities of life, you're getting older, you have more responsibilities. But when we're Razorback, we're still 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Look at us now! <laughs> I'll be yeah. uh, The most important thing is, is don't expect money from this. Do it because it's fun. You know, do it because you love it. Number two, if you opt on doing this, guys be friends. Leave the ego out the door. Flush it down the toilet. Be friends. Advice number one, tune your instruments before you get on stage. Advice number two, you have to get along with your bandmates. 
in order to survive. You have to be friends, brothers, the closest possible you can get to each other. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. <laughs> God, you smell good, man. Thank you, thank you. This is home. <laughs> you guys having fun in here? <laughs> I love you, baby. Mm. That, that is Yan! Di ba? Pagmamahal, kailangan niya sa banda. Ang daming magaling na banda. Galing-galing nila. But they never lasted. Were they? Nag-iwahiwalay na. Ang kanya-kanya. Sayang, di ba? You guys have to be friends. I think we're a little more relaxed. I don't know, maybe because we've been doing this a long time, so we've been around them. Um, learn to enjoy it a little more and not be so hard on ourselves when things don't go the way we should. This stuff made us crazy. Today, it keeps us sane. That's probably the best way to describe it. Be true to what you are and be true to your bandmates because that's going to be the outcome and the, the product. It's like sex, man. It's, it's like your musical baby. How can a band function if you don't love yourselves? Truthfully, it's the journey. Enjoy it. <laughs>